You ready? Yes. <laughs> okay, we're ready. We're ready. All right. Hey, Gathering Place family. Good to see you today. Happy New Year. It's the very first Sunday of the year. I am back with my special guest who is back by popular demand, <laughs> uh, Lydia Davenport. Would you greet mm -hmm. us? Hi, it's good to see you guys virtually through the phone and through your comments and um, can't wait to get into what we have today. Yeah, today's a special day. So we are kicking off this year right. Uh, we are going to talk about understanding God's plan for our life and how to make the decisions so that we're, we're in the right spot for it. So we actually see God's plan come to pass in our life. Yep. So Lydia, you are in a significant time of your life. Mm -hmm. um, you... You are a senior in college. Yes, I am. And you're graduating this year? Yes, in the spring. How many more months? Three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah. Four, four months. Four months. You're going to be graduating. You're going to be done. And uh, then hopefully you're off the family payroll and you'll get your own job, <laughs> right? My own job, own insurance, all that. Yeah. Eventually. You'll pay for your own phone bill? I will. Yeah. Yep. We're going to be rich as soon <laughs> yeah. as she's done uh and well, her siblings. and the rest of them. And yeah. then you probably might get married someday. I will, hopefully. Okay. All right, so, so graduating school, mm -hmm. you have an internship lined up for the summer, but you don't know career-wise like uh, your job lined up. Yeah, you know correct. kind of the direction that you want to go. Um, but how do you how do you discern? How do you kind of how are you approaching that? Like figure out what to do because you've got major life decisions. Yeah, I've got a lot of decisions and I've got a lot of opportunities. And I think one of the things that I've learned is everybody wants to give you an opportunity or there will always be an opportunity, <laughs> at least in this case of just when you're fresh out of high, uh, college, so many um, employers just want you because they want you um, to start you out, to grow you, and then to keep you for the next 30 years. Yeah. And so with that, there's so many opportunities and it's been really uh, difficult, but also a blessing to navigate those choices mm -hmm. and so how I do that is kind of up to uh, up to the decision or up to the problem that I'm facing yeah. opportunity I'm facing yeah so we're gonna talk a little bit about that and maybe help some people out who uh, not everybody's getting started in their career some people are, yeah. are retired some people watching this here you're thinking I don't want a career I'm fine with what I'm at but but we all have important decisions that we have to make and not only that, uh, regardless of your careers and, and the major life decisions, every uh, season of life gives us an opportunity to really walk out the plan of God in our life. And so hopefully we'll be able to walk through some tools for that mm -hmm. um, that, that will help. You know, you mentioned something about a lot of opportunities. Yeah. There's a lot of opportunity. There is. Do you see life that way? Yeah. Yeah. I think life has a lot of opportunities and a lot of responsibilities that you sure. can take on. So I, I've talked to a lot of people about uh, who are facing major decisions and they talk about praying it, praying and whatever door God opens. Yeah. And, and so sometimes that's a, that's a great way to go, but what would you do if God if opens several doors? doors. <laughs> yeah. do, you know, it clearly either you go through all of them because you prayed that God would open a door. And so mm -hmm. every open door is God or how do you decide then yeah. when doors are open? When you have multiple doors open. Um, like you have multiple opportunities. I did have multiple opportunities and I still do. And for me, there's a couple of things I look at is what is the time commitment, especially going into a career? What is it going to look like? How is this going to set me up? Um, and what are my current responsibilities and relationships that I have? And how will that this mm -hmm. decision, how will moving forward and taking on these different opportunities impact different um, different parts of my life? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all of those are great questions that, that you should ask. And I think there's even uh, more available to us as Christians as well. Yeah. And going back to, you know, praying for God to open doors. Uh, you know, not every open door is from the Lord. Right. Sometimes the enemy can open a door. Sometimes someone with good intentions can open a door. Mm -hmm. But but sometimes everything could look right. Like you have two great opportunities and, and great uh, great jobs, great career paths, you know, great relationships, everything could look good on there. And then you're still faced with the decision, like one is not better than the other yeah. necessarily. So how do you decide? And so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Uh, how do we know God's will for our life? Mm -hmm. um, here's a question that we should probably start with. Does God even have a will for our life? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And 
And so I think it's pretty clear from when you read the scripture that uh, God has God has a will for everybody. So mm-hmm. it, generally speaking, you can know God's will very clearly by opening up the Bible. You open up the Word, yeah. and you'll you'll read things like uh, that you should love your neighbor as yourself. Mm-hmm. You'll read specific scriptures like uh, it is God's will that you would abstain for, from youthful lusts. It is God's will that um, you would give thanks. Yeah. This is the will of God. I mean, it says that specifically. Mm-hmm. It says to flee uh, youthful lusts, to uh, abstain from sexual immorality. It, it says that we should abstain from idolatry. These are all things that are specifically, or are, are they're written in the word. It's very clear. Mm-hmm. So I think that most people, though, aren't asking, hey, should I give thanks to God or not? I don't know. Is that God's will? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things that are written that are pretty clear that people, that and it is God's will, yeah. and, and we don't even question it. We don't even realize it. Uh, and we live, we live uh, outside of God's will because we don't simply read it and apply it. Yeah. But, but that's not what I want to talk about today when we talk about God's will. Mm-hmm. Like, like, is it God's will that you stop sinning? <laughs> yes, yes, stop sinning. <laughs> Say to the person in the room next to you, stop sinning, right? That's God's will. Is it God's will that you do, you live righteously? Yes. Okay, so, I mean, absolutely. It's God's will. Live righteously. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's the biggest question we have. Uh, but those things are super important because that's the general will of God. And, and then the general will of God, I think, is foundational to the specific will of God. Mm. Meaning this. God has a plan for everybody's life as believers. Like right. we're all to live that way. But there's a specific plan that God has for your life and for your life and for my life. Yeah. And if we if we don't if we don't actually build our foundation on the general will, I think we we end up really missing out on so much of the specific will. Mm-hmm. And most people are trying to, you know, they're they're they get stuck in the valley of decision based on the specific stuff, right? Yeah. So God's, the scripture is not going to tell you, you know, in, in the book of, of Hezekiah chapter 13, Lydia, you need to take a job as an accountant versus in, in finance. Mm-hmm. It doesn't say that in the no, Bible. No, it doesn't. And I wish it did. <laughs> but do you think God easier. cares about those things Absolutely. for you? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely he does. Because he's created you a certain yeah. way, right? He, he, he is... He, he has gifted you, he shaped you, and, uh, and you have desires and, and strengths that will line up, and, and there's something that he has for you there. Um, God has a specific will for our life. Mm-hmm. He has a specific will. So he doesn't, he, he's not distant in the sense of, hey guys, just be good till I come back. Yeah. <laughs> just stay out of trouble and try not to, try not to need me <laughs> to do anything. I mean, that's, that's not how he operates here. Right. Uh, there's a couple of scriptures that I think are really key for us. One is in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. When we talk about knowing God's plan and really having him having a specific plan for our life, this is a great verse to start with. And it helps us understand uh, God really does know your number. He, he's got thoughts towards you. Let me read it to you from the New King James Version. It says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Mm-hmm. So the Bible's telling us this, that, that Lydia, you're God's workmanship. Now that word workmanship, it, it means like masterpiece. It's not like you're a piece of work. <laughs> Sometimes. But, but you're a piece of art. You're, yeah. you're, his, you're uh, his masterpiece. Mm-hmm. And as his workmanship, you are created in Christ Jesus for good works. So it says, you, who he is working on, Mm -hmm. he's shaping you in Christ Jesus for good works. So his good work is on you, but you have good works to do as well. Now, here's the interesting thing about that scripture. Um, God's not coming up with these things on the fly. Mm -mm. He's not making it up as he goes along. He's not looking at how you develop and thinking, hmm, you know, because Lydia is really good uh, at math. I think I'm going to have her do this. <laughs> he He's not thinking yeah. that. He already knows. Because look back at the scripture. You were cre- 
through his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand mm -hmm. that we should walk in them. So, so God already knew you were going to exist. Yeah. He had you in mind. And when you came to faith in Christ, this is when the plan of God for, for us comes alive. Mm -hmm. Now he has a plan for everybody, but, but if you're not in Christ Jesus, you will never fulfill the plan of God in your life. It's impossible. You can, you might think you're doing it vocationally or by serving or doing all these things, but until you're in Christ Jesus, you'll never be able to fulfill the plan of God. Yeah. So when you entered into faith in Jesus, suddenly this plan became accessible to you. Yeah. And it says this, that God prepared these works for you. These aren't works of righteousness, yeah. by the way. The good works that the scripture calls us to, it's not like, hey, did you do do the right things in order to please God? Uh, these works right here are, are the actions he's called you to. Just like you're his masterpiece, it's the masterpiece or pieces <laughs> that you're mm -hmm. working on. Yeah. And so he prepared these beforehand that you should walk in them. So all of these things that God has for you, these good works, um, he... He intends for you to accomplish. You should walk them out. Right. And those specific things are not found for you in the Bible in the sense of, I'm going to read my name and say, Lydia, do these things. Yeah. There's no set of directions in that sense. Right. And so so what it does is it puts us in a place of dependency on him yeah. and to, to be able to walk that out. Now, here's another scripture I want to read to you, and it's from Psalm 139. And, and this is another verse that lines up with that. And it tells us about how intentional God is with us when it comes to his plan for our life. So I think that many people would be familiar with the Psalm chapter 139, verse 14 through 16. It says this, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed and in your book, they were all written. The days fashioned me, fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. So I love this last verse. First of all, it's telling us that, that even in the womb, mm -hmm. you know, we know life starts in the womb, right? Yeah. And, uh, but, but God's plan for your life started before you were in the womb. Mm -hmm. But life starts in the womb. And, and the psalmist is sitting here and he's saying, you knew me at, at this point. And of course, in their understanding there, uh, which would be limited scientifically from what ours is, and yet yeah. still understood, but yet that's a living person inside there. A person with a plan of God on their life. Mm -hmm. But I love this last part. It, sa it says, um, in your book, they were all written the days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them in your book, God, it's as if you wrote the novel of my life page by page, mm -hmm. all of these works, all of these steps of my life, everything that you had for me, the days were fashioned for me when as yet none were written. So in your life, what's going to happen tomorrow is a blank page yes. for your understanding. Yeah. And for all of us who are listening and watching, uh, we don't know what 2021 holds. We don't know what, uh, you know, we don't know what's going to happen after this video. <laughs> we don't know. Uh, but God does. Mm -hmm. And so for us, you know, we know that God is concealing these things, yeah. not to hide them from us, but to reveal them. <laughs> and so you have all these questions in life. I have questions like, what do I do with my, you know, prep, how do I prep for this year? And uh, how do how do we how do we know that how do we know what to do? So so does God have a specific will for our life? Like yes. specifically? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, He does, and it's very clear that. Uh, well, I think that there's so many opportunities for us, and so many different things we could do that God's like, hey, just so you know, if you become an accountant or you become, you know, a marketer, neither one of those are going to make you righteous or unrighteous in God's right. eyes. Right. Yeah. But maybe one of those things are specifically what God had for you mm -hmm. or he could have them at different times. Those are important questions. 
But here's what I think is really, really going to be important. We want to know God's plan for our life, right? You ever ask him? Yeah. Do you ever feel like he's told you his whole plan for your life? No. <laughs> How many of you guys that are watching you think, I wish God would tell me what his plan is, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to know. Sometimes we're working on things and... How do you feel when you're in that place, when, when you don't know? When I don't know, and there are seasons where I kind of know where he's leading me, and other seasons where I'm like, what in the world am I doing? And I feel really lost. You feel lost. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you do when you feel lost? This <laughs> is all, by the way, this conversation, we didn't prep for this. I, I just wanted to have a conversation because this is, this is how we process like mm -hmm. through the scripture and, and these important things of life. So he's kind of putting me on the spot. Right. With all of his questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you asked, how do I, um, what do I do yeah. when I'm lost? And I think a couple of things that I've had to do over even this last semester is, well, of course, first pray and ask for the next steps. Even if you don't know what the next year is going to look like, you mm -hmm. know what the next, maybe you can plan for the next week or the next day or some decisions. But then other times it's, um, so you pray for that and you ask the Lord to help you gu to guide you through those next decisions. And then, especially in times when I'm feeling discouraged and lost, it's taking myself back to what God had said previously. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of times God can say so much to you and you forget it <laughs> because life happens mm -hmm. and you're not revisiting it all the time. And then you feel this discouragement of like, what yeah. in the world am I doing? But if you have it written down or you know, like somewhere you can just go back and say, this is what God spoke to me. This is a portion of his plan for my life. And I can make some decisions off of that. Or I can at least be encouraged right. knowing that there still is a plan. There still is a purpose. Um, and even though it kind of looks foggy right now, I know that there was a, and there is going to continue to be a clear direction. It's really good. So. You're so spiritual. <laughs> You know what I'd do? I'd probably eat ice cream and watch Netflix. That's <laughs> yeah. what I do. Like when I don't know what to do, <laughs> it's probably what I, I do. I do that too. <laughs> I just sit on the couch and wonder like, hmm, maybe someone will call me and, and tell me what God's will is. <laughs> well, Actually, there there is a, a better way than, than um, eating, eating too much ice cream. Not a much better way than eating a lot of ice cream, but you should still, uh, you, there's some tools that I think are helpful. And uh, I want to walk you through that. Because I need the help. Yep. And <laughs> I'm going to walk us through it. And yeah. it's a practice that uh, we were introduced to several years back and has yeah. been a huge help to, to us. Uh, it's called Roles and Goals. Roles mm -hmm. and Goals. And so we're actually going to go and we're going to demonstrate roles and goals you ready for this yes i'm ready you ready i think so i don't okay we got to go outside oh yeah really yeah what do you think we're gonna do roles and goals in here yes <laughs> no let's all go outside come on okay. all right video eight we're back i got you what are we doing i don't know we're doing roles and goals roles and goals weren't you just in that video with me i was all right we're ready for the next step here's your roles now it's time to set some goals here. Oh, no. Come on over. We're gonna play a little game. In this game right here, we're gonna deter we'll determine who buys coffee at the next coffee trip, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna be the goalie. I'm gonna stand, I'm gonna stand right over there. You're gonna have three shots to kick these past me. If you can get it past me, then if you get more shots past me, then here's what's gonna happen. You win, and I buy you coffee that next. Works. That's how we do rolls and goals here. I should have worn my tennis shoes. And this will determine what God's will is. Are you guys ready for this? Here we go. All right, ready? Ready? Oh, not a goalie. Ready? Set. You win. <laughs> oh, nope. Now it's my turn here. I got to get at least three, otherwise I'm buying the coffee. <laughs> Are we ready for this? Bring it in. One, two. Ready? I'm going for the middle one. Three. 
<laughs> you ready for this? One, two, three. You think so? Okay. You, you get a retry. <laughs> that didn't make it. Okay. Okay. You, you win. You win. You win. Well, clearly Lydia is better at rolls and goals than I am, but I think there's a better way to determine God's will for your life. We'll talk about it inside. All right. We're back. We're back. Well, how do you feel about doing rolls and goals? Well, if it, that's rolls and goals, then uh, not so good. <laughs> Yeah, you're pretty good at it. You're actually better than I am at it. And uh, I think that there's probably better ways to figure out God's will than whether or not we can get a piece of uh, roll of toilet paper past your dad. Yeah. Okay, so uh, roles and goals is, is a tool that I want to walk you guys through and walk you through as well as we do this. Uh, it's a very simple way to really identify um, what does God call me to what roles has he called me to, and then what should I work on in, in those roles? Mm -hmm. You know, we all play different roles. Uh, I'm a dad, I'm a pastor, I'm a husband, uh, I'm a friend, mm -hmm. I'm, I don't know what else, I, I'm a child of God. You know, there's other roles that, yeah. that I play in life, and all of us wear different hats. So, you know, what mm -hmm. are some of the roles that you, you play, just right off the top of your head? Uh, I'm a daughter, I'm a student, I'm a girlfriend, I'm a friend. Um, I'm a daughter of God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so right off my head, <laughs> top of my head. Did you say sister? I am a sister. Yep. All of those require something of us, right? Yes. Scoot over here closer to me. That's good. It's not too close. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, all those require something of us mm -hmm. and, and the way we relate to the different people in our life as well as the assignments we have, like a job assignment, student, and so yeah. forth. And over time, those roles, they, they kind of adjust and where our emphasis needs to be. For example, my role as a father towards you when you were, you know, elementary age and even teenage years is different than my role to you now. You're a young adult. I, my parenting has shifted to uh, not just like permissive, like, yeah. hey, you can, you can't do this, but it's the coaching, it's the encouraging, it's the releasing, it's the believing in. Mm -hmm. It's still the funding in a lot of ways, but not much. You take care of most of that. You're really resourceful. <laughs> um, you know, that's actually pretty true. I, that you take care of most of your finances. Because mom and dad set her up well. Mm -hmm. And Jesus has blessed her. Mm -hmm. So so let's actually talk roles and goals. Okay. So, so those are the roles. This is the practical stuff that will help you to understand... Um, not just what God's plan is, because there's so much of God's plan that you'll never know. And I, I don't mean this like, hey, you can't know and God works in mysterious ways. I'm just saying that it's just the reality that, that there is more on, on the pages to come than he's going to reveal to you right now. The, the most important thing for us is to be prepared for those pages to turn. Mm -hmm. And so in 2021, we're here turning pages and God has something in store for us this year. And it doesn't have to be graduating college. Uh, some people could be living their normal life and no roles change and no major life uh, changes. Yet, what are you telling me to do at this season of my life, God? So this is what you do. Very first thing you do, you set apart some time to pray. You set apart some time to open up your Bible. Mm -hmm. You set apart some time and then you, you take a moment and you just write down the roles that you know of that you, you, you already fulfill. Mm -hmm. Again, we mentioned some ourselves as you're watching this, you probably can make a list, uh, you know, start off, I am a child of God, your relationships, you know, mother, father, uh, spouse, you know, ch you know, son, daughter, whatever that is, identify those, your job, your friendship, identify the roles you play in life. But before you just go on and say, okay, these are all the roles that, that uh, I play, it's really important to take a moment to ask God, God, are there any roles that need to shift mm -hmm. for example maybe you've been the caregiver for somebody that it's time and the lord said you need to release that person and and let them take responsibility for themselves mm -hmm. maybe you maybe you've been uh, a girlfriend i'm not saying this here but maybe you've been you've been in a relationship and i know you're in a healthy relationship so so mm -hmm. uh I'm not saying this for you, but maybe there are people who are in unhealthy relationships 
and that's a role you've played. But now it's a time where that needs to shift and change to where you back off. So you ask the Lord, hey, are there any of these roles that I need to cut out? Now, let me tell you something. If you're married, you better not be asking God, should I end this? This is not the right question to be asking him, right? Like, I'm, I, I just maybe 2021 is a year to, to uh, stop being a parent. <laughs> no, <laughs> too late for that. Um, you, those, are, those are roles that you're going to play. Mm-hmm. There's probably some, and you guys can figure this out, but, and, and the Lord will tell you. And I'm not just trying to tell you to figure it out on your own. I'm really asking you, uh, invite God into this process. Lord, show me, are there any roles that need to adjust? Is there anything that should be added? So, so maybe I need to, I haven't really looked at being a friend or maybe a neighbor, for example. Mm-hmm. I haven't really looked at my neighboring as a role. But yet the Lord might speak to you and say, this is something that's an assignment for you. So, I mean, you're, you're a dorm, a dorm roommate. Rimmer. Roommate, Ooh. right? Yeah. And so maybe that's something that would, you know, it could be anything. And mm-hmm. here's, the, here's the deal. No one's going to tell you what roles that God wants you to focus on and not. This has to be something between you and the Lord. Mm-hmm. So everyone has opportunity for you. But what is God's will? That's what we're trying to figure out. So that's the very first thing. Ask God, uh, should anything be added or taken away? And then the next thing you want to ask is, Lord, but what, uh, which of these roles do I really need to focus on? Because there may be some that you're doing just fine and there's no adjustment, no change, or it's just back burner. Hmm. It, it's, it's not the primary role that you play. Uh, now remember, the roles we play, though, all of life flows out of that. So this is how you relate to everything and everyone. So everything flows out, out of this here. Uh, so there's some things that will be just as is, but the Lord will, will highlight to you specifically what roles is he wanting to emphasize in your life. And you just ask him that. Yeah. Then it, you just move on. Once you have a good sense of that, then we move on to goals. And next to each role, you want to take time to pray first, God, what are my goals for this? What are the goals that you have for me in this particular role? So I'll I'll do some, I'll just throw one out there hypothetically because uh, copying somebody else's goals doesn't do anybody any good, right? (laughs) That's not what we're talking about. We're not even trying to fill things in. Like if you don't sense that the Lord is bringing something to your heart and mind on that, don't write it down. Yeah. Because you can make a goal for that, but this isn't just simply goal setting. This is inviting Jesus into the process to help you. So, so take the time and pray. You know, I'm a dad, okay? So I would take time to pray over my role as a father. And if I felt like this is, the, this is a role that God has for me to emphasize during this season, like really be, be mindful of and working on something, which by the way, most of the time, if you are a parent, it's probably going to be one of them. Um, and let's just say, I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask God, what, what are some of the practices that I need to put into place as a father? So I'll ask, what are the things that, that I need to learn about? How do I need to grow and develop? I'll, I'll ask some things about changes that need to be made in my parenting. Mm-hmm. And then I'll, I'll be processing through these things regarding each one of my kids, because each one of them needs a different, um, relationship with me as the father and so those are things i'm going to ask about then once you once you process these things through like for me i I, maybe maybe i'd feel like the lord's saying okay with with lydia here you need to call her every saturday morning and have a a conversation Mm -hmm. with her uh abigail you need to make sure you write notes to her Mm -hmm. justice you need to you know talk talk to him weekly about his car and some of the other stuff like just things to relate It, it doesn't matter to me what it is it's what do you sense the Lord's telling you? Because it may seem very simple, like, hey, call your son and, and ask him about his car and talk car stuff with him. But what that does, what it could be doing is building this bond that for years down the road, you'll always be able to go back to. Yeah. And you don't always know. You don't always know. So for you, even with your, your career, I mean, you, you, um, or you have the different volunteer roles. You know, maybe the Lord would tell you some things to do in those with relationships and so forth. It's, it's really, uh, it's really gives God an opportunity to speak and we, we give him leeway. Whatever it is that you want to say, 
I'm not just making stuff up that sound good. Yeah. So, so you kind of understand that process so far. Mm -hmm. uh, repeat back to me what, what you just heard. All of it. Well, word for word. <laughs> give me an idea of setting goals. What did you get out of that part? So you're setting your goals and your um, within your roles, you set your goals that will strengthen and build. Um, I would say your relationship with other people because generally your role is a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, that set a great foundation yeah. for um, building a relation, building on to the relationship, and it's practical. Um, like you said, call me every single Saturday morning. That's a task. That's easy. That's. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not always easy, but it's. Um, it's doable. It's doable. It's doable. Right. And so there's specific tasks that you could even assign to yourself to make your goal achievable of pursuing or developing mm -hmm. this relationship or honoring it. Or... Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so here's another thing is, you know, you might say, well, I, my role is uh, out of all these roles I play, then I have myself, right? Yeah. Like, like who I am that all this flows out of. And maybe um, that would be one thing you put in there, like as as myself, mm -hmm. you might think that's a weird role, but listen, it's, uh, it's a real. <laughs> maybe the Lord would tell you something about your health. Yeah. He'll say, you've got to start to exercise every day. <laughs> now, some of you would look in the mirror and say, I already know that. Okay. But, but is the Lord telling you to do that? Because here's the deal. When, what we're not saying is set goals. And if you achieve them, that's fine. If not, no big deal. What right. we're saying is, God, I'm asking you to speak something to me. And what that does is it puts a level of weight to it. Meaning mm -hmm. this, if you don't do this, if you don't do it, what, what you're saying is, God, I, I, I'm trying to hear you. And then you, I feel like you told me to do something. So if I don't do it, I'm really, what am I doing? I'm, I'm, dis I'm disobeying, yeah. right? <laughs> and so this isn't to put a weight or responsibility on us in that sense. But what it is saying is, no, God does care about these things yeah. and he will help you. Mm -hmm. He will help you. And so here's what you do after that. Once you, once you set those goals, uh, calendar them, mm. calendar them. Uh, what about accountability? Yeah. Who are, who are you going to, uh, bring in to help you be accountable to these things? For example, if one of my goals was to, um, date my wife every week, right? If I felt like that was something that, that the Lord was telling me to do, um, and then I have an accountability partner, then he could ask me every week, hey, did you take your wife out on a date? Did you take your wife out on a date? Well, why is he doing that? Because I need to um, be accountable so that I stick to the things that I feel like God's called me to do. Yeah. And then budget, you know, budget for these things. Some of them won't take any money, some of them will. And yeah. so, again, if this is a goal of yours and it's a practice, a change, a transformation, Sometimes it costs money. It will cost time. Uh, it'll it'll take other people to support you in this. And when you do that, here's the deal. Um, you, you set yourself up so when a God-given opportunity comes, you are prepared for it. Yeah. And so really, knowing God's will isn't so much about, God, tell me which direction to go. But it's so much more about, Lord, help me to be prepared when the opportunity arises. So, so that I know. Mm -hmm. So that I know I'm, I have the gifts, the talent, the preparation. This is a uh, couple other scriptures for us. And then we're going to close out. From Proverbs chapter 16. Tells us this about the plan of God in our life. And we'll look at verse 1 and we'll look at verse 3 as well. Verse 1 says, the preparations of the heart belong to man but the answer of the tongue is from the lord so what god is saying to, to us is that it is our responsibility to prepare it's our responsibility to get ready the preparations of the heart belong to man and it's the lord's responsibility to speak mm -hmm. and he'll speak to us and tell us exactly what to do when to do it he'll guide us because our hearts are already prepared Verse 3 says, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. So what are we doing with roles and goals? We're thinking, we're processing this here, and then we're committing it to the Lord 
and we'll see him establish that in our life. So what I want to invite everyone to do is within the next next few days, if you can, set aside some time, set aside some time, pray, identify your roles, invite God in to tell you what roles to focus on, what roles to let go of, and then start to pray concerning each one of those roles. What are your one or two goals that you would, um, you feel like God is telling you to really uh, emphasize and really work on as well, work towards. Then on a weekly basis, you just review your roles and goals. How am I doing? You know, you write all this down in maybe your journal. How am I doing with this? Celebrate the growth. Pick up the slack. If you realize, you know what, I haven't been doing that. Don't be under condemnation. Mm -hmm. Just pick up the slack. Strengthen those things that, that need to be strengthened and pray, God, how are we doing with this? Because roles and goals is not a list of do's and don'ts. Mm -mm. It is, it is a, um, it's a process to invite God in to preparing us for the future. And in 2021, there's certain things that God has for you written in his book, and he wants to reveal them to you. He's got good works yeah. that he prepared beforehand that you would walk in them. And so what are we going to do? We're going to go pray and do our roles and goals. <laughs> and then we're going to walk in them. And then we're going to walk in them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a lot of fun with you, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm excited to see what God has in store for your life. Mm -hmm. For everybody who's watching today, I would love to hear any feedback that you have on maybe what are some of the roles that that you feel like God's telling you to focus on? And what are some of the goals? Share them. You can go to our Facebook page and, and share that. Send me an email. I love to hear what God's doing in your life. Uh, we are meeting in person on Sunday mornings at 930. We'd love to see you in person, but if I can get you online, I'd love to be right there in your home, on your TV, on your phone, and uh, spending some time get, helping to strengthen you in the Word so that you live out your faith more than Sunday. We love you. Till we see you again. God bless.